Hi, this is Arnav from Scalar. Welcome to yet another episode of Three Factor. And in this episode, I would be talking about how should you approach learning a web development uh, tech stack. For example, I'm talking about something like Spring Boot or uh, Django or Ruby on Rails or Node.js with Express. How do you learn how to build web backends uh, in any of these tech stacks? So while the choice of language can depend on a lot of things, it could depend on what language that you already know. What I'm talking about here is applicable to any of these tech stacks. It's more generic, like how should you learn how to become a good uh, web backend developer, right? So the very first thing is, uh, whichever tech stack you're picking out, I would say, I personally prefer that in the beginning, you just focus on understanding the language, first of all, very well. And to do that, there would be a few things you should uh, learn to do with the language, like uh, doing some file operations, like reading a file, writing a file, uh, doing some encoding, decoding, like uh, taking a string, encoding into base64, decoding from base64. Can you make a simple HTTP request using that particular language? Like maybe some open API uh, that you just make a, a request to fetch some JSON data from that. Are you hands-on with that language? Because if you are not, one of the things I have seen is that people start learning a tech stack uh, like for backend development. And while they're doing that, they are also in parallel learning a lot of new things about that language in the process. Now, our brain would always find it very difficult when you are both fighting with the syntax of the language, like how to write three files uh, to disk parallelly. Right, and different languages are different processes. Some languages have threads, some languages have something like asynchronous jobs and all. So if, if you're focusing on those kind of things and then also understanding how APIs and databases are connected, those things together don't really work out well. So spend a few days first to get hands-on with that language. Then we move on to actually uh, starting to build web servers. So the first thing is let's just quickly understand in that particular tech stack, how to create a web server where if you send a you know HTTP get request, you just get back a hello world string or something like that. Just how a web uh, server works. Once we get there, the next step is to understand how do we create REST APIs in that particular tech stack. REST APIs uh, are basically you have a bunch of HTTP methods. You have get, post, put, patch, delete. And using these methods, you can basically, you know, on different, different URLs, you can talk to a server. So for example, let's say uh, GitHub has an API. So if you go to api.github.com slash and then name of a username, you get information about that particular user. If you make a get request, you get information about that user. If you make a post request, you can update the profile of that user. If you go to user slash repos, now that's a collection of the repositories that that particular user has. Now again, in a collection, if you make a get request, you should get all the repositories. If you make a get request to user slash repos slash one, then you get the first repository, right? So how a REST API should be designed is something that we also must learn. And there are very good resources also uh, available on how you should build a good REST API. The important things to understand is that there are some HTTP status codes also. So if you actually get back the information that you required, you should send a 200 or a 201 if uh, some data was submitted to the server. So these response codes are important. If the client did not, uh, you know, send proper uh, formatted, uh, you know, uh, request, then 400 series error, error is something that you should be getting. If, if the server crashes because of some reason, then a 500 series error is something that uh, you should be getting. So sending the correct response codes, learning that is also very important. And uh, you will read about blogs from, you know, very senior engineers, leaders in the tech industry. You will oftentimes find uh, blogs written where they talk about uh, people in the industry working on software for a long time uh, also sometimes create REST APIs where say they are sending a 200 OK response and inside the response there is an error. We should not build APIs like that. We should build APIs sending the correct sort of status codes because then the client can know if to kill the request, if the response has come with a status code 400, they don't need to you know actually go through the response body. Once we do this, uh, the next uh, you know step is to learn how to uh, work with data. So databases, obviously, there are a bunch of types of databases. There are uh, the you know SQL databases, which are most widely used, like something like MySQL or PostgreSQL. So in whatever tech stack you are doing, like with, with Java, how could you connect via JDBC or JPA to a PostgreSQL database? Or via Node.js, you might be using a ORM like uh, SQLize. Uh, so how do you connect uh, to a SQLize uh, via SQLize with an ORM to a Postgres instance? Uh, so learning this is uh, very important. Uh, you should be able to very freely manipulate data in a database using your tech stack. Uh, you know, 
you have to store maybe you know blog articles comments on the blog articles okay comment should have a blog article id uh, relationship in it so a i think uh, understanding sql itself is also very important uh, it's regardless of whatever text tag you're using you can't only just learn the orm you have to learn how the text tag is supposed to be uh, you know how you create classes and objects in your project and and how that reflects as tables and rows in then wherever data you're storing no sql is also something you should learn because uh, something like mongo uh, mongodb cassandra these are uh, fairly widely used uh, databases and then some uh, memory based caching layers as well like for example uh, how to cache your data in redis and some text stacks like for example uh, if you are working with django uh, there is a sub framework called celery it's, it's a library which helps you you know store uh, data in a mem cache or in redis kind of things so learning how to store data in different types of databases and different layers like at a disk layer at a memory layer how to do that and next comes putting these things together and this best works out if you try working out with an actual project so let's say i want to build a small clone of twitter microblogging site right so so there will be users so i will have to create an api how to you know sort of submit user details and making a post request and a user would get created in the db and in a response the user's id would get come okay then how a user can uh, create a new post so if you send a post and you send the author id inside that post then a new post would get created and the post would be related to that author right these relationships uh, you need to be able to you know if it's sql correct you know uh, db relationships if it's uh, mongo db then embeddings properly understanding how uh, those can be best created right while you're building such apis like this you should also focus on some very hygienic parts of of an api is that does our api support pagination for example like if i am fetching for posts can i fetch for the first 10 posts only and and can i fetch for post number 31 to 40 page size 10 page number 4 can i fetch a post like that because when you build client apps like a mobile app or a front end if you have 1 lakh posts in your server you know 1 million posts in your server you don't want to send the client 1 million posts they will scroll only periodically in their app right uh, that's also very important then once you have gotten to this point we need to understand a little bit about how to work with authentication as well so authentication uh, means uh, then again a lot of things like how do you give a cookie or a token to a client so that if the client presents that cookie or token back to you you would know that it's an authenticated client so one is that authentication the other part is also identifying which user like it's not just the token needs to be valid it also we have to figure out that which user it is so that if there is a user token coming and they write a post we know who is the author of that post automatically because it is authenticated by that particular user then you might also need something which is called uh, third party authentication so if you want to implement something like login with google or login with facebook on your project in that case you need to understand how oauth works so oauth is a protocol which tells you how to you know get uh, authenticated via a third party authenticator like google for your project so that's also something that we need to know once this is done uh, one more topic i definitely do recommend uh, to learn a little bit when you're working with web backends is to uh, understand how to create uh, something real time and to be building something real time you would probably need something like let's say web sockets and web sockets is a fantastic way for your at least for small scale projects for your backend and front end to real time communicate and send events to each other so understand the web socket protocol and understand how the web socket protocol is implemented in your tech stack and then they all have libraries like ruby on rails or something like action cables node js has a socket.io library python has a web socket library so how to use socket and do socket programming between your uh, client and your server okay once this is done mainly your learning of the tech stack part has ended the next part is a little more generic and it's uh, regardless of whether you're working with whatever tech stack django spring boot node js does not matter you should know how to dockerize uh, your project and turn it into a you know binary container kind of a thing so if you use something like golang maybe then your server is generally just one exe file or one uh, single binary versus if you are uh, you know using something like node js it will have a lot of libraries along with it if you are using java there will be a jar file but the jar file also needs the jvm to run along with it so how do you put all of these things into a encapsulated container and docker is one of the best ways to do it uh, so that you can dockerize and then anybody can just download your docker image and run it without you know thinking of other things so learn how to containerize and also learn how to deploy your tech stack so can you log into a linux server ssh into a server and just deploy your own project you might need to install your language or your runtime you might need to install some libraries 
and and you know if you deploy it you need to set up something like a you know uh, what we call forward proxy like something like nginx or apache which is sort of the network layer which will uh, receive the request and send it to your application which is running on the server so how do you set something like that up with your project that sort of i would say the finishing step you learn that and you are ready to start building web servers so that's fairly it uh, and all of this does take time it's not like you know you can just sit down and in two days you'll be able to learn all of these things so it'll take time spend your time but you need to learn all of these things to become a well rounded web backend developer and uh, if you you know like listening to more such topics about how to learn uh, different different things in tech uh, definitely do subscribe to scaler's channel and follow the refactor series thank you